Hello, welcome. I'm Bill Wake. We're here working today on Dungeons and Patterns. It's a role-playing game originally designed for live action, and we're trying to do a version that's uh, online. And today, um, well, <laughs> my plan was to look at um, uh, using the game's minimum solution count. So we have this notion that there are levels and you need to solve so many puzzles to go down to the next level. And um, today we're using this sort of hard-coded count to say like, if you get five puzzles, you get to move down. Um, we did some work last time to read the proper value from the file, but we're not applying it yet. And so we'd like to do that. But as I was setting things up, I noticed another problem. So we're probably gonna get stuck on that for a while. Uh, let's see. All right, so in local, we're running reactor and our tests are passing. But <laughs> if I actually run the app, I'm getting this stuck in a mysterious room thing. And um, that's not a good sign. Um, interesting hexits.header is there. Okay, so, hmm. Well, we got two ways of getting to this mysterious room. So let's see what's going on. And um, I don't know if, I, I well, here's the deal. <laughs> I'm on a different computer today. And uh, I think I got things set up okay. I saw this problem, kind of panicked a little, went back to the old computer, tried it there. It's got the same problem. So we're in one of these unfortunate states where the unit tests pass, but the program doesn't run, which is not a good place to be. And I'm not happy to be here, but that's where we are. Okay, so, uh, and what I think this this room with the question mark, it's um, it's really from one of two places, I think. We have this notion of the default game, which has one room, and that room is the unknown room. Let's go over there. Unknown room has the unknown image, which is the question mark. You're stuck in a mysterious room and nothing else is known. Okay, so if if you start the game, let's see, where's init? Um, model. Uh, all right, so if you start the game, the initial state is the default value. And default value is a model room. And the room is the default, or the game is the default game. Let's go to default game. The, the default game has the unknown room again. Okay, so that's one way you get there. When you start up immediately, you get the unknown room. Um, the second way is if there's an error Let's see, again, I think message is probably the place to look. Okay, so when when we first start the game, we we start with an initial command, which is load game. And um, load game can have two responses. Okay, new game, so here's your new game. Let's get going, let's start that. Or load game and you get an error and we get the default game. Okay, notice that's the same game, all right? Um, which means we can't tell the difference between starting up before we load the model and loading, you know, starting up and loading the model, but it's an error. Um, okay, so I see a couple things we can do. Well, one is I can make some sort of game that's not the default game, but it's, it's sort of like an error game or something like that, um, you know, where we, we set the room to being um, an error room of some sort. Okay, that's that's a reasonable way to go. Um, so we can at least tell the states apart. Oops, message. The other way um, is I would think of extending the state. Like lots of lots of web apps have a little you know message area up top, and uh, if we were to put the error message that we got from load game into that, we could see if something's wrong. And I, I don't know. All right, so that's one way to go is to kind of push forward and try and figure it out. Um, I'll spare you a little bit of what I did earlier. I, I did go into uh, whoops, um, my GitHub account. Well, I don't have that password handy, so <laughs> um, let's let's try. 
uh, the support in here. Okay, one thing I can do is go back. Um, I don't know if the best way is reset head. Let's see if this just works. No, okay. <laughs> um, well, let's see what we're doing here. All right, now let's make sure we can check in. I thought I did, but let's let's double check. Okay, so um, one thing I noticed just as I was between things, um, game has something a little odd in it. Here it is. List up filter map, lambda x goes to x. So I know there's an identity or ID or some function like that that represents x goes to x. So I just put a message in here um, about that and I'll just add to that message. Make sure I can commit. Oops, lost my view over here, sorry. All right. <laughs> and if you're not hearing me say something because as far as I know, the audio should be coming through. All right, control A. Get add. So this commits the current version. Um, the head is the first line of this file. So, all right. I'm at least connected to my Git account. All right. Um, okay. Interesting thing here. Okay. So we did a bunch of stuff, a lot of refactoring last time. Um, Okay, these are all Sunday the 14th. I was trying to be good about checking in often. Um, let's get back to the 12th. Okay, so we should be able to sync back to this. And I'm just gonna sync back a full, a full session um, just in hopes that we can straighten this out. Okay, so I got these. This thing says back 14. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, all right, this is still. Okay, I guess that's almost like it's not doing a like, why do I have the current version of this and an old version of that? Hmm. All right, let's see if our tests, okay, our tests still pass. Let, let's just save an arbitrary change just to make sure they run again. Okay, yeah. So those tests are passing. I'm gonna stop reactor just to fully kind of try and make sure everything's reset. Okay, and back here and reload. Okay, so this is odd to me. Like, I can't believe we didn't run once the other day. Um, let's let's try. Um, well, let's let's go further back. I guess I'll do that again. October. Okay, that's pretty far back. <laughs> um, October. I mean, I, I certainly have made a check-in and left things read before. Sometimes I will do... If you're working and you're coming back the next day, it's not a bad way to try things. You know, you, you leave it you leave it red and when you come in the first thing you know what am i going to do oh i'm going to fix my red um i'm finding it's not quite so helpful when i've got a, a week between my my sessions um so that's that's really um 
it's it, it's unfortunate when I do that because I come in and I have no idea what what was going on. You know, it's not like oh, I know what was going to do next. All right, this commit removes smudge from ear horn. That was a a picture fix, so I'm assuming we could run the game at that point. So I'm going to sync back to this one. Okay, and if I can run, then we can try and. Um, if this works, then we know that something went wrong partway through. If this doesn't work, I guess I don't quite know what to think. Okay. I didn't touch game. That's just weird. Okay. Again, I'm saving so I can make sure I'm compiling. Yeah. Okay. Okay, and I'll stop reactor. Okay, let's restart it. So this is my poor person's bisect kind of thing. All right, let's reload this. Okay, um, so I find it very hard to believe that we can go back two sessions or more and have this problem. Okay, so let me reset back to head. We'll try and debug it forward. Um, all right. Now that leaves open the question of how we want to do it. Are you what? Head. Hmm. I'm puzzled. Okay, um, huh. I guess I didn't, don't know how this tool works as well as I thought. Um, is there another one that will get me there? I don't want to reclone. <laughs> All right, I'm going to pause again. Let me let me run off and see if I can get something so I can move forward here in just a couple minutes. All right, uh, so I was able to log into GitHub. Let's go to DNP. Um, all the commits. Okay, so we want this one, BE74903. confused here okay um, am I starting at the top e7493 okay that's something okay all right, I think I'm back to normal. <laughs> um, let's, let's change something. Okay, well. Stick.l. 
We don't have a state dot elm. What are you? We got rid of those. Um, sorry, where am I? Okay, I think we're back to normal. <laughs> All right, um, hmm. So I have to decide, I guess, like, am I gonna try and put the message in? Or I can, I can put it in. I mean, I have the description. Hmm. I, my other alternative is I, I take a, a room, I modify default game. Um, let's see what's involved in that. Uh, I guess I can do that. It's starting room solutions translation map. Okay, so I can do this. That's the map. So I can replace default game as well. I don't know if I'm, uh, I've never done this. Okay, so I'm gonna make it default game with map equals this. And then I think I need another brace here. Okay, I'm, we'll, we'll clean up. I don't know, what am I doing at this point? I'm spiking, I'm, I'm not doing very well. Oh, <laughs> uh, let's see, so unknown room. Let's take the room. Where? description equals I don't know if I can do air and it's not buying this is it room is Okay, let's let's go back a bit. Okay, that compiles apparently. Okay, test pass. So I've got a dictionary with an unknown room. Okay, let's do a let. Let's 
let um, error room equals oh right it doesn't like it doesn't like anything except a, a name there hmm let's try just unknown room we may have to import it with description equals error okay that would be a step forward um, this is oops in this thing okay and now for room I'm going to use error room okay so at least this will confirm to me if I see something about error um, as my description then I know it's a file loading issue which after 20 minutes would be progress error okay so something's wrong with loading my file the file is here dungeon.json looks okay but we'll find out oh oh my goodness is this an, is this the problem that i don't have wow i think i know what the issue is <laughs> oh dear um we said game game is going to have this new minimum solutions count let's see where that's set here we require minimum solutions i think that's a okay the error i expect is you don't have a minimum solutions in your file okay we got a starting room we got a translation we got a map unless i put it at the very bottom but i don't think i would okay we will definitely benefit from knowing the error message okay so let's let's do that so if error we actually collect the error and um i don't know what type that is is it control p will tell no <laughs> um well let's just put it here and something's bound to complain okay description string found error okay um let's go to documentation Hmm. Error is part of the HTML stuff. HTML. Oh no, part of the JSON. Maybe decode. result to error okay error is field error string error hmm um is there like a do stringy kind of thing i really don't want to decode each message separately if i can help it string core string from int oh realized i left my camera off okay um i don't see anything here let's let's do a search so elm convert error to string to 
the string not working? Yeah, we know those. Well, I guess I should search for JSON specifically. Yes, that's kind of my question. JSON set stringify object to get him. Okay. <laughs> Combining the answers, object dot get on JSON. That looks a lot like this answer. Fine for it, but it's not worth a mongoose. I don't care about mongoose. Hmm. Okay, let's see if this thing works. Oh, did he define property? Oh. This seems to work. Okay, let's try this. Object I get on property names. It seems like, well, <laughs> guess I'll let it be what it is. JSON.stringify. Okay, they don't know where to find this or that. Okay, I don't think that's going to do it. All right, well. As usual, there's a lazy way and a proper way, I guess. Um, let's let's define a helper. Um, this is probably not the right place, but um, let's just do JSON. How about S string error? S string takes a error, produces a string error. No. I'm trying to remember what it said before. Something went wrong. Okay, thank you. <laughs> um, that's not the real thing. H Everybody was HTTP error. Um, Okay, I'm going to back up a little. I don't like being stuck this long. Okay, so I'm just going to make, um, I'll make the message a little more explanatory than just like, oh, error. Okay, and if we save the test pass, this should get this with the new message. Whoops. Error in loading game. Okay. I believe I know what the error is. So let's let's make this. Um, all right. So first, we're going to get running again. <laughs> Add the field to the JSON. 
Okay, then we're going to look into um, error or handling, or at least that's on our list, um, when load game fails. And what was the name of that field? Like in solutions? Okay, so let's add this. Add the min solutions field to the JSON. Okay. And JSON here. sure this builds okay is reactor running yes reload yay <laughs> okay um so all right so now we have min solutions being read properly i don't think we're using it yet even still um but okay but at least we're we're running again so let's uh like i'd like to check that in Okay, so I'm gonna go back a couple here. This one. Okay. Um, get running again. Admin solutions field the JSON. Okay. And then the next thing was error handling when load game fails. Well, I I think what's going on, right, is the game let's see what what decoder does. I don't really know how decoder tells me there's an error. Okay, so we said this field was required. We didn't get it. Obviously, there's something that comes back in and somehow it turns into an HTTP error. Um, let's go to those. Uh, we were there. HTTP and somewhere in here's the error. Trying to find it a description. There we go. Error. Bad URL. Bad body. It's probably a bad body. The body was unexpected. Okay. Let's, let's expect string response. Let's check that out. No, I don't, I don't care about that. Let's, let's at least take, take care of this one. All right, so, hmm. I'm not quite sure here. Load game. Okay, load game either fails or succeeds. I guess if it fails, it gives us back the HTTP error. Okay. Um, Let's let's split this case apart. And I guess I just want to try it, see if it works, and then we'll we'll get fancy. Okay, so this is the error was like bad string. Bad body. Okay. I'll import that. Okay, and I may have to parenthesize. All right. Um, let's just put the message here. Okay. We substitute the room. Okay, so let's take this back out. And 
I'm letting this case, I'm peeling off one of the error cases. Um, it seems a little, I'm sure there's a better way. <laughs> Let's say it that way. All right. Uh, so this should fail. It should pass test because we're not testing this particular behavior. Okay. But our program should fail again with a different message. Okay. Well, um, my goodness, we're going to get the whole document in here. Maybe something at the end will. Okay. Expecting an object with a field named minimum solutions. <sighs> wow. Um, That's helpful for me as a game designer, <laughs> slightly. I mean, the the it's called burying the lead. Um, we'd like to know this first, and yet this is kind of tacked onto the bottom. Ugh. Um, if if I saw this, it's like ugh, but it's I can deal with it. You know, I know to ignore this junk in the middle, and focus on the ends. Um, the string we're getting is just not that helpful. I, it, it's trying to be, but you know, we got a top level object and it's just like everything. Now, can I keep the user from seeing this message? That's the real, the real trick. And I don't know. I mean, you can hide it behind a button or something, you know, so it doesn't show up in the text unless somebody really, you know, show detailed error or something like that. Um, I think I'm going to take this as my debugging trick. Okay, that I can that I can go for a detailed thing. Now, what that does tell me is I probably I probably was on a better track with my as string. I'm not sure this is the best place to decode these things, but um, I want to take any HTTP error and turn it into part of the message. Um, yeah. That's at least a testable thing. I don't I don't know if this is a diversion. We've we've run into this once or twice before. Um, I felt like we debugged it easier when I left off something before, but um, I don't know. Okay, but I think I think we need to know this. Okay, so let's um we're, we're gonna peel off something i'm gonna say i really wish i had as string which is error to string okay and if i had that function um okay um, let's start with what we have. Error in loading game. Okay, so I'm returning that. I'm just going to treat this as an extract method -y kind of thing so far. Okay, so if I returned as string error and I take out this case okay um, I expect this to behave the way well let's take this out again I expect this to run the way I did before and say there's an error okay all right, so I think that's a refactoring to what we had. Now I can go in and I can 
test drive a better solution to this and um, make make our error messages um, at least at least know the HTTP errors a little bit. Okay, um, we normally take a break about now, so let's take a two or three minute break. Uh, we'll come back, we'll work on these errors, and um, let's see, let me, let me record this. But anyway, we'll come back and we'll work on the error handling, get it just slightly better, um, at least some message that, that me or somebody else who, who's more of a programmer can decode. Um, and yeah, we'll get that done and then we'll move on to more game oriented stuff, actually using that solved minimum, okay? So see you in a couple. Hi, welcome back. All right, so I've got message test here and ready to go with message. Um, let's just add these to the bottom. One day I should probably dig deeper and figure out more about the test runner, but I don't want to today. <laughs> okay, so we want to make sure that as string, um, well, I almost want to say can decode bad URL. Okay, so decodes bad URL. Okay, and that's backwards pipe to a lambda okay and we want to say expect dot equal um, bad URL I guess I can say something about error first. Error bad URL and then message. Um, you know, the string. Um, URL message. Okay, and that is if you do as uh, message dot as string. Then we want error bad URL. Let's see, how do I make this thing? Bad URL string. I don't know why that's on the other line. need this okay do I need these friends okay well let's do it the other way then pipe it to messages string Take a bad URL with message, pipe it to string, okay, and we expect to get the wrong message, error in loading game. Okay, so now 
uh, we do a case error oh, syntax <laughs> of okay of okay the first well the default case is now this and this case is bad URL message goes to um, error whoops error bad URL is that the right way to write that I guess so okay I expect to pass okay uh, timeout network error those are kind of easy okay bad URL timeout Surprise doesn't want to import that okay but error fail peel off that case timeout okay network error yep I think I'm going to add this. No further information. And you let me modify both at the same time. I should say, because we know what we're doing, you know, but <laughs> the evidence on that is a little slim. Okay, so no further information. In this case, network error. Pass. All right. Bad status with an int. All right. Bad status. You got a message. You got a response. error loading game instead of bad status okay
Hmm, I thought there was an integer to string. Well, the last one's bad body. Let me keep a node here. Let's put a, a placeholder here for that. And we saw something int conversions. Oh, convert string to int, but not the other way around. Okay. Hmm, I'm really surprised that it's not built in. Maybe I'll take the debug one, but I find it a little odd. No, these sound like we're getting close. Okay. Well, we'll take the debug one then and see what it does. And I may have to parenthesize. It's happy. Okay. Bad body. Should fail. Okay. Well, I'm not going to need this default case anymore, so we'll just take over that. Bad body message. I don't remember there being any interpolation or string interpolation. Okay, should pass. Okay, um, let's do a little one bit manual test. Save that. We should get the message about bad body and then followed by that horrendous string. This reload, yep, bad body. Problem with the given value, and down here I'll tell you it's expecting a field already. Whew. Okay, we prevented future errors anyway. Okay, and I think we can check that in. And I guess one of the things in this is, you know, that pattern where I started with just an, an underscore meaning anything and then I printed a generic message and then I peeled off the cases. I definitely like working that way because theoretically I could check in after each one and maybe I should just to get the small bytes going. But uh, yeah, so I think I think we've we've done this. You can you can critique the errors for sure, but at least next time we'll do a little better. So that's that's my goal there. Um, theoretically, you know, if I've tested my game at all, 
I'm not going to see that message. Um, you know, it should be obvious that something doesn't load. Okay. Um, okay, so use self minimum in a game. All right, so I got to shift my, my head a little bit. Okay. <laughs> hey, thanks. <laughs> um, Okay, so we got this min solutions. Let's let's track this thing down. So we got min solutions. It gets set. Well, game has the starting room min solutions integer one default. Okay, and what's going to update that? Well, nothing here. We can make a room with min solutions. Let's see who uses that. All right, so we got game has it. Yep, test do it. All right, I guess this is reflecting that we don't use it. Okay, so um, let's go back to loading a game. Um, all right, so assuming things go right, yeah. Um, we would like to not only well, we would like to use this game. Oh, so it's coming in. We've we we've parsed the JSON. We either get OK, new game or an error. If we got OK, new game, then min solutions is set on that thing. So the the reading process uses that. Does it work? That's the question. All right. Now. Somewhere. Was it in model? We defaulted this thing. Solved minimum. Okay, who uses this? Let's see. My new keyboard is. There we go. Oh, can move down. Yeah, here we go. So when you want to ask the model, can you move down? We just look at this hard coded value. All right. And what we should do is look at the games version of that because we hold the game in the model and um, we want to pick it up from there. So I, I think it's fair enough to ask the model, can you move down? Because really it's the the like the facade in a sense, um, you know, it's sort of providing this interface to the view that lets it ask these questions like that. Um, so I think our test is we ask can move down model. Let's make sure it's coming from the game. So let's get to a model test. Oh, don't have one. Okay. Uh, does this work? No. Okay. Oh, I don't have, do I have the presentation thing on? Well, it's not what I want. I do though. Okay. Uh, model test. All right, we can hide that. So minimum, uh, let's see. Somebody's gotta be doing can move down. Okay, here's can move down. Okay, so we made a, a game. Well, game is the one that holds min solutions. So let's revise this game and uh, change the sub minimum solution number. Okay, so can move down expects false because um, it requires five puzzles solved by default and and we don't have it so you can see the one that succeeds has the five here all right so if well if it's not enough let's see can't go down if not enough are solved that's a true thing 
but okay, this one's probably the better one to do. Let's let's just make this three. Okay, and um, well, I kind of have to do both these. All right, but let's let's work with this one first. We'll see that one fail. That's fine. Um, my game map from list. Okay, I I really want to make get min solutions in here. Min solutions equals three. So yes, I can move down with three. I've got a game with the room down. I've got three things solved. I should be able to move down. So let's. Let's run this. Where did my something went wrong? Yes, I would say terminal. I think I was looking for a J unit runner. Okay. Um, can go down if there's a way down and enough puzzles are solved. Okay. Let's fix that. Elm should not be looking at solve minimum. It should be looking at um, game dot minimum. Well, where's it getting? Well, it has game, right? And solutions okay so I'm saying you should get this thing from the game this is my error there okay um, you should get the value from the game instead so I expect this test to pass can go down and can't go down to fail okay good um, and we'll we'll make um, min solutions equal five Okay, so if you require five games, you only got four A, B, C, D, or five sol false solved puzzles, okay, then you should not be able to go down. All right, and that should pass. Okay. There's probably a way to deal with this. If, you know, we have the, in general, it's a set of tests that kind of coordinate together, and, you know, we could have maybe created a new method and then delegate to that, and, you know, if I can keep track of it, I just keep track of it. Okay, so we got this solved. This is now not used. Okay, and let's do that. Okay. Um, cool, everything's passed. Let's check in again. Use solve minimum in game. Okay, and let's just let's just run the game and and make sure. I'm gonna change the <laughs> I'm going to make it easier for me. Let's just say you need two solutions to, to change, to change. Okay, so two. All right, so if we restart the game, okay, we start with this familiar puzzle now. If you've been watching before, you're presented with this box. It's got a button on it. You can do actions, you know, press the button that, you know, say my name, whatever. Um, but uh, at some point you decide, you know, I know as much as I'm going to, I'm going to guess the pattern. And in this case, prototype is sort of a good guess, right? All right. So we've solved one puzzle now. I go to the doors. I see a floor with three keyholes. Okay. You know, it, it really should be five for our, for our purposes. Um, I've got doors, but I do not have a, an exit way down. So let's go to another room. Okay. You see an elf, ask me anything. Um, you know, what color is gold? He looks over his shoulder, yells, where's the gold? You know, um, okay, whatever. Eventually we might figure out this represents a proxy because we're kind of talking to somebody who gets the actual information. Now we've got two solutions. Let's go back to our main room, our, our keyhole room, and notice there's there's an option to go to the next level. All right, so we met our minimum of two. When we first came in, we only had one and we couldn't go down. Now we can go down and um, let's see if I can find 
find the way out. <laughs> I, I'm kind of being random. I don't remember the path enough to do it. Okay, here we are. But notice there's um, there's no section in here about moving down yet. Okay, so we don't have any puzzles solved. We don't get to move down. All right, so I think um, that is good. Let's put this back. Save. Um, it's one of these things. It's funny. It feels like so much work to get here, and then boop, it's just not that hard. Okay. Um, I guess that's a good thing. It doesn't have to always be hard. But we've done this. Okay. Um, game all answers filter map. So I mentioned this earlier. Let's see down here. So when we're trying to dig out all the answers, we look at the game, we pull out the map, pull out the values, um, map each one to its answer. And then the list filter map is, um, it's, these things can be maybes. So it basically kicks out the maybes and applies your function to the ones that aren't maybes. So in their example, string to int, well, three is good, high is, you know, this one returns just three, an integer, and this one returns, um, what's the other thing? Nothing. <laughs> okay, so you get just three, nothing, 12, or just 12, probably nothing, probably nothing. And each of those gets mapped through um, the filter map says, okay, I'm just going to keep the ones that, that have just on them. And I'll strip off the just and give you the answers. Okay, so we're doing the same kind of thing um, to get, you know, some of these answers, some of these rooms we don't have an answer for. And so it's a nothing. And then we get rid of those and we're left with the real ones. And we do from list and to list. And that's, um, that's actually sorts it. I, I don't know if that's the best idiom to use. But these things come in order because the rooms are in order in the map and we're trying to get to a sorted, uh, a sorted list of them. And uh, getting rid of any duplicates is good. So from list gets rid of duplicates and to list sorts the, the remaining ones. All right. Now this, I, I guess it's going to be in basic. I hope it's in here. I think it's like identity. Yeah, there it is. Okay. Given a value returns exactly the same value. Okay. So, which is basically like lambda x goes to x. Okay. So let's just try identity here. Identity. Okay. And we, we're mapping on this just, um, just to get the benefit of the filter map doing the work of deciding which ones are maybes and all that stuff. Um, there may be, okay, well, let's, let's take that for what it is. Okay, so this is a refactor. Oops. And we made a change, so our test should be running. And I'll just, again, I gotta make sure they really are current. Cool. All right, so that did the job, and we can push that. It's definitely an improvement. Oops, this one. Okay, um, but it it. I just kind of want to figure out if there's a different path through here. So, getting the values from the map that seems that seems okay, and then mapping each room to its answer that seems okay. Um, what, what I'm less clear about is, do I really need all this stuff? Now there maybe has, has its own stuff too. So let's go look at maybe, um, that's a separate package or module. Maybe. And I'm pretty sure he has a map. Okay. Maybe A goes to B goes to maybe A goes to B, maybe B. I'm, I'm, I'm after something that strips out maybe, so maybe I have the right thing. Okay, transform a maybe. 
So if I transform my maybes with identities, then I just get identities. Mm. Map A to B. It's not stripping off any maybes. So maybe filter map is right. Okay, I'm not seeing anything that's gonna change my mind on that. Yeah. And this one's kind of nice, it preserves um, the things in your list. So if you apply square root to just nine, if function is square root, just nine. Well, that's a little weird. I, I guess, I mean, I don't think of it as, I just think a map is a list thing, but I guess the map is any function mapping across. That's fine. <laughs> I'm so used to the one you use with lists. All right, so I guess I think we're probably okay. Uh, let's let's check this entity. Um, how can I get from a set? I've got a list with duplicates. I want to create a sorted list. Um, so to list does the sort from list removes duplicates. Let's see if maybe list has a sort that deals with unique ones or something. Max, min, sort. Okay, we can sort the values. No. I mean, it's letting me, it's letting me map before I sort. So I've got a, I've got a map in my second argument, list A, I've got a bunch of, a list of stuff. And before I sort, I can sort on the, on the property of the thing. Okay. Um, and it's keeping the same it's it's using the property but it's not it's not only returning the property or anything like that so if you wanted to if you wanted to turn the list into the property you'd have to do a a, a map or something first okay um all right i guess i'm okay with this it's probably it's an improvement i don't see anything it does it in one step but um a lot of times with these maps like this it's like you you find a path through the thing and then you can kind of figure out some optimizations of it or, you know, simplifications. So, all right. Um, show locks for secret doors after you solve the puzzle. Okay. That's, that's good. Okay. We need to get, well, what's another one we need to do is deploy the game to the web and make sure it works. <laughs> all right. Um, so this one, let's see if I can get, uh, let's see what we look like now. All right. So if we go to this room, well, what I would like, I, I'm not sure where we are on this, but, um, I would like that, that there would be secret doors. So if I solve this thing. I'd like to be able to make more doors show up, okay, that you, and and really it's the hallways I don't want to, I kind of don't want to reveal. Okay, I think we came in through this path, right. So if you, if you were in here, I'd rather not let you see the hallway until you solved it, okay. So um, it's time for another quick break, so two minute break, and we'll come back and see if we can make that work that way. I think I think we did some stuff to help, but uh, it looks like it's not quite there yet. So it may be a problem in the JSON. It may be a problem in the code. We'll come back and figure out. All right. See you in two. Hi, welcome back. All right. Uh, whoops. There we are. 
Okay. Shop box for secret doors. All right, let's go look at our view. All right, so back kind of to the top. Hmm. Ooh, there's some. There's an opportunity for refactoring. Um, let's record that. This is in view. All sections. Location around when to show. Okay. And that's a refactoring. Okay, so show doors. So um, basically, this this part of the thing is deciding what parts of, what to, what parts of the game view to show or what parts of the model to show. So we we show the scene for sure, and then we decide: Do you have any dialogues? Okay, because not every room has you know actions you can take. And then if you have a puzzle, we show we let you guess it. Otherwise, we just put empty text. We show some doors. And then if we can move down, we show the way down. And okay, so I, I don't know, just blinking back to, we had a situation, oh, our empty room, our error room. That's kind of weird. If model can move down, let me, let me look at this one. Salt game solutions. Oh, okay. Let me let me take a detour here. Our default game. Um. Hmm. The the problem. What I saw was. Um. Let's let's see our error again. Sorry, I'm feeling distracted today. You're distractible. Okay, so I made our, our thing show up, and then notice at the bottom, exits.header. Well, we get exits.header when we've solved enough problems. Okay, so we show you the, the exits. Um, if, oh, is that, that's the doors. So, okay, let's go there. All right. Um, so notice we we show exits.header. Normally we translate it. If we weren't able to load the model, we don't have a translation. And then we show the buttons for this thing. But what if a room has no exits? Okay. Um, unlike the other ones, okay, doors always shows its stuff. Well, we have at least two cases where there is no other exit. Okay, so one is the error room, the unknown room, uh, like we get on our error message here. There's there's really no exits. Okay, we don't have any doors for this thing. It's an empty list, um, and because we don't want once we've trapped you in this error situation, there's really nowhere to go. I mean, we don't have, you know, we haven't loaded any game. You're stuck. Um, the other place is at the very end of the game. Let's Jason, and this is why I started going down to the bottom. Level three is intended to be the end of the game, and we want some message for that. But really, there there are no exits. Okay, um, in the original, it's like the dragon. You you meet the dragon, and it it you know carries you away or something. Um, you know, you don't need those stinking doors kind of thing. So um, we we definitely have situations where there are no doors. And you can see that the lack of symmetry in this. I mean, the scene, we, we are going to describe something no matter what. So that's kind of like mandatory. But everything else is kind of an optional component, except doors, which should be optional. So let's add that to our list. Um, uh, don't, sh uh, don't show doors. Don't show, well, I'll call it exits if there aren't any. Okay. Um, and I just, like, I know I'm being distracted, but I got to solve the things. All right. Or, yeah, got to keep track of them somehow. Cause <laughs> it's 
pretty clear work on this thing part time. I'm even even <laughs> even in more uh, danger of not remembering stuff. OK, so doors, we basically are going to create a list of buttons and then we show a header text and then we show the buttons. But um, there's nothing on this. I don't think. Um, yeah, it just asks for exits in the current room. All right, now I don't know if our, I don't think we built this in yet. Doesn't look like it. Yeah, okay. Um, so let's go back up to the top. All right, so prototype only has one exit and this one has a couple. Let's, uh, sorry, let's go to the map. We've got an example down here somewhere. Um, this may not be exact, but it's close enough. All right. In this in this version of things, I I'm okay. I kind of want this to be a one way door. And I think we're okay the way we come in. Um, you come into this is the keyhole room, and then I want to make it. I'd like to make it so you can't go in either of the hallways unless you solve the puzzle. And actually, I might do that here too, just to kind of force you. Like you got to get the first one right. I don't know. Is that too strict? Maybe it is, but I definitely want to block off the hallway. So in every room with a hallway access, I want the 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 hallway, which might be one M or one J or something, um, whatever it is. Oh, it's called hall one or hall two, I think. Um, you know, those should be secret exits. I don't necessarily need to know it's a hallway. I could I could make any of these be secret okay and I think maybe this map yeah shows some S's to represent secrets and um, my friend that helped me with this Steve Metzger passed away years ago but um, a bit of a geek on some of this stuff and like this is a Dungeons and Dragons sort of um, map design uh, convention that S means secret door and so 2k can't get into L unless you find a way to open the secret door and that isn't necessarily solving a puzzle in a real dungeon game. It could be anything, but, um, you know, rolling the dice usually is how I see D&D. Um, but you have this notion that there are secret doors and they, they only trigger, okay? But if I look in the JSON, right, there's nothing in here about secret doors or anything else. So there's nothing that, that stops you. Um, nothing nothing that you know there's nothing no way it, the system can know which ones are intended to be secret or not okay now i mean i am using this convention you know one dash hall two dash hall or whatever but um yeah we don't we just don't have this concept at all so this is a brand new concept in the game so um that's that's all right but then the question comes like um are we where are we keeping this stuff and the two places, one place could be the puzzle, right? Because if you solve the puzzle, then we might give you the, the list of secret doors, okay? The other reasonable place is is here, okay? And I don't know, I'm liking the word doors better, but exits is fine. Um, I could add another field that's like secret exits or um, triggered exits or um, hidden hidden exits, maybe hidden. So I would have two lists of of rooms, and then in the display of the doors, um, I probably want to. Uh, where am I getting these rooms? Well, I mean, all this stuff down here to get out the rooms and from the model or whatever is, is getting that list of rooms. Um, doesn't mention the word exit, so I don't know what's... It's the images for the rooms. What's going on? Concat map. Oh, okay. Yeah, there's dot exit. So um, basically we're getting the exits from the current model. 
Okay, so the current room's exits. And then we're mapping each one to the, the HTML button. Okay, but I would probably want to make a two list version. You know, I want to join these two lists. That's not just the exits, but the hidden exits. If they've solved the puzzle and we don't, I'm not sure how to, how to tie this together. I mean, I can certainly create a list of two from two lists. That's not a problem. All right. So I, I think the path through this is we're going to add something that's called hidden exits. It's optional. Um, or maybe maybe it's required. I don't know. I don't remember requiring something when when it can be an empty list and then each room is just kind of very similar to the next structure wise. That's probably okay. Hidden exits and it knows the the rooms you get to or the doors you get to use if you solve the puzzle. All right now deciding that you've solved the puzzle and all that stuff that's that's we haven't we haven't really addressed um but you know we're three quarters through today <clears throat> excuse me so uh i think we'll provide some capabilities and then next time we'll we'll take advantage of them maybe we'll do um well, I'll tell you, if we could get if we could get to the point where we had the hidden exits, we read them in from the JSON and we use them in building the door map. Down here. OK, use them in building the door map. Um, that would. Uh, let's see, then we, we could we could build the list of the two together and basically uh, not do anything hidden about it. Just, you know, show the hidden rooms last and uh, they would all be visible. And so I, I think that's a step forward from where we are. Um, it, in effect, I would move some like this one, I would move one hall one into hidden exits and then it would still show like it does today. It always shows all the buttons for the exits we'd be in the same state externally, but internally we'd be far better off when it came time to decide whether to show it or not. Okay. Um, and I think I want them all on the same list because they just kind of a pop up, you know, they're there now. All right. So let's, let's give game something like exits. We'll make it a required field with an optional contents. You know, it's a list, could be empty, and go from there. So here's game, and we'll deal with the JSON. <laughs> um, and that's that's kind of a challenge. I guess, is this room maybe is where it goes? Okay, yeah, the room has exits. Okay, now the problem I have is doing this sort of has a lot of follow-on effects. I don't, I don't, I don't have a good way around this. Like I like things to be incremental and the, there's this thing in Elm of like, kind of like get it compiling and everything will be right, you know, but I don't think that's really quite true. But let's say, suppose a room did know it's hidden exits. It's a list of room names like the other. Okay. And, you know, we could encode this differently. We could, we could make exits you know, they, we could maybe make a little type that's like revealed or hidden, you know, and, and make one list that might be reasonable. Um, let's, let's do it this way first. Okay. Now things are going to start complaining. <laughs> All right. Um, not as much as I thought. Okay, so unknown room doesn't know the hidden exits. All right, well, we can fix that one. Um, before way down, there's a list of hidden exits. 
Okay, the room call produces a maybe. Okay, the fifth argument to room line 23. Yep, yep. Okay, yeah, now we're getting into the JSON. Did it? Yeah, so it failed. Watching for changes. Okay, so my pipe, my explanation here. Okay, um, that's up in game. I'm not sure how the best way to do those is, but that's just where it is. Okay, so the problem is the um, this is supposed to build a room, but it's missing information is probably the way to say it. Okay, so it can't handle the arguments. Decoder is supposed to produce a room, but it's producing, um, you know, it just doesn't 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 look right. <laughs> okay, so this is well, I think. let's let's do it optional for now so we're going to get it in there make things compile and um there's one that does a constant or it ignores oh is it value value do not have anything to do with the json value just bring it into elm as a value you want to deal with it later that sounds like us um i think we can i think we can do this to it no let's see what the complaint is the argument is a list but i want a value okay json.decode value all right, I'm going to look it up. Decode value, value. Do not do anything with the JSON value. Just bring it in as a value. Return null into some value. Fail. I thought there was one that produced a constant. Boolean float no nullable. No, I really thought there was something like that. Value takes a value. Okay, we don't want that. Well, let's let's do a list decode then. It'll basically be this. So much for that theory. Optional hidden exits. List of room names. That should be okay. This optional hidden exits. Okay, decoder argument is a decoder. 
typing it to something that expects a list of strings. Where's this optional required stuff? Maybe there's something going on there. Okay, where are you coming from? <laughs> JSON. Oh, that's the that's the pipeline helper thing. Let's go find. Required, optional, optional add. That's probably it. Hard coded does not look at the JSON. Okay, so hard coded zero for followers. That's what we want. Uh, it's on game. Hmm, it's not even telling the field name, just a value. Okay, that's let's try it like that. Okay, <laughs> okay, what's your problem? Oops, maybe I'm just messing it up with this. Okay, the fifth argument to we're getting further. All right, let's go back up. Well, it's places that are building rooms, mostly tests, but okay. that's my error there. Okay, we're in the test side now. So game, we built a room do we have a helper for room? Not really. Okay, so game test 104. Okay, well, I'm not super happy doing this. Um, 76. I guess it's two places. Okay. Well, that's progress. <laughs> okay, so we have hidden exits that we can look at. Um, we don't load them properly. Okay, so let's let's start making some some subtasks here. Okay, so um, we need to we need to load hidden exits from JSON. Well, I guess before that we need to make um, update uh, dungeon description with hidden rooms okay we want to load them from from the JSON okay we want to um, display buttons for hidden exits actually I can move this up and then we want to Hide hidden exits. Well, let's, let's use English. Hide hidden exits until puzzle is solved. Okay. 
um, I'm saying I can uh, display them. I mean, I think we may have to come back to it, but I can do something now uh, for the view. So here I do this list concat thing and I get the list of exits. Um, and I could peel out the hidden exits just as well. All right, so let's let's do that. Actually, let's let's commit. That's a step forward. Um, the activity we just did was um, add hidden exits to room. Okay, and we've um, defaulted to empty. Okay, so right now that's always empty. Um, I guess, well, at some point we need to handle, handle non-empty lists of hidden room, hidden exits. Okay, I, I don't know exactly which one we'll do with these first, but let's, let's get this one locked in. Add hidden exits to room, okay. And we've got that. Check in. Okay. Okay, so now I'm going to try and do this. Let's say revealed exits is this. Back over here and save. Okay. And then hidden exits is going to be very similar. And we'll have to decide if it's foldable. Okay, and let's get all exits <laughs> is revealed exits I do do dot plus hidden exits. Okay, I think lists should do that. Okay, um, remember each one's a list of room names, so we should just be combining them into two two lists in order and then this thing let's um well let's use all exits okay now we can flip it around you could you could do the pipe thing you could say all exits um, piped into, whoops, ugh. pipe into the list. And then we don't need this last argument. Okay. I don't know if I b believe it's better or not. That's a horrendous thing, though, isn't it? Button. Let's let's try and format a little bit. We got two two things going on here. It's still long. Okay. I, I don't know. I think that's all right. Okay, so we're building up the individual lists. This should always be empty, so this should just be as it was before and it should all just work. Okay. And let's go run the game. 
make sure. Oops, did I forget to put that thing back? Yes. Okay. And run. Okay, there's no hidden exits. It looks like it's the navigation we had before. Okay, so I think we, we haven't done any harm. All right. Let me let me just we only have a couple minutes, so let's see, is this refactoring trivial? View all sections, duplications around when to show. Well, what I'm saying is if you passed me a function on model, well, I, I guess it's a conditional function and a hidden function. Um, let's call this something like show. Uh, show conditionally and it takes um, well it needs a function from model to boolean and it needs a function from well, it's from model to HTML message, yeah. Another function from model to HTML message. It needs the model and it returns HTML message. Wow. If I could spell English, there we go, finally. Okay, show conditionally takes a condition function, a HTML function, and a model. And what are you going to do? What's wrong with that name? Two, three. Surprised it likes that. Okay. Well, I'm trying to get this text. I'm I'm doing basically an extract method. If condition function applied to model, then um, HTML function of model else empty text. Okay. Now, what's the matter? show conditionally does not exist. <laughs> what? Maybe we can get a bearer error message. I was not expecting this symbol. Oh, no colon after the definition. All right, things passed. Created without error so far. Let's let's plug it in and see what happens. Okay, so um, this is show conditionally model dot has dialog acting and model. All right, and that's the stuff it's replacing. Well, I don't think we test enough in there to, to detect it. All right, but this one is show conditionally model dot has puzzle guessing model and the final one is show conditionally model dot can move down show way down and model Okay, save, go over here, run. Okay, the pieces are there. And we'll we'll just solve it and make sure that last one gets gets the deal. Alright. Proxy. Oh, we were set to five. Okay, I'm gonna trust it. <laughs> 
Okay, but we, we definitely have the first three sections, so at least uh, that's that's okay. We got the main section. Well, I don't know. Do we have everything we want? Um, lost. Okay, that we're getting past what I have defined in the in the dungeon. Okay, but I think these things work, so we'll we'll call it a wrap on those. Okay, so uh, that's a refactoring. Okay. Um, yeah, I think that's that's going to help a bit. Um, all right. And hmm, I was talking with somebody today. We can we can we can take this uh, model off because these are all functions that end in model, I think. But uh, we'll save that for another day. All right. So next time is uh, Sunday, two days from now. And um, we will uh we'll pick up we'll we'll pick up with showing these hidden doors okay so oh mystery message black tomcat uh so we're doing this dungeon game in elm and uh so far we've got a fair bit of uh the functionality we expect for it let's go back whoops um i guess main yeah so we have this notion of of a picture and a description and you can do some actions and uh, see the patterns and so on. So um, this is uh, uh, the bas basics of this game. Mostly I've got the game defined in a JSON file. I've got a few gaps I got to fix. And then we were just adding uh, refactoring around showing uh, conditional rooms. Um, never heard of uh, dragons? Of course, yeah. <laughs> um, I've never heard of Elm once it's niche. It's basically a, um, a functional language. It's fairly, um, I don't know, fairly newish. That probably means 10 years old at this point. I don't know. Um, and uh, it compiles to JavaScript by default. So it interacts with JavaScript reasonably okay, I guess. I'm not pushing that very much. I'm, um, I've am i played with it over the last year or two and uh, I'm trying to take a kind of small but real project to work with it. Uh, it's it's a nice language. I I definitely recommend looking at it. It's uh, uh, it's it's got some cool ideas, and uh, uh, I've enjoyed working with it so far. So, all right. Well, today this is the wrap up for today. So, see you Sunday or sometime in the future. I hope and take care. Bye bye.